their subs. Not at 20, 8.20 20 to go in this first half. Bob Levline and John Adams here at Jersey City State College. An early season crucial one, and Waddleton's ball for the reach. Uh, excellent move by the defensive guard. Doubled down on the ball. And right then, uh, Frank was ready to make the pass to his partner in the lane, who had his man sealed in the block. Could have been an easy two. So sometimes the fouls come opportune. Reed the inbound, he throws it away. Good pressure, Waddleton ahead of the field. He's fouled and it doesn't go. Excellent body. You know, you talked about Danny Waddleton just knowing his, his, you know, his limitations, John, and he really does show that he's just has some real good court sense. Well, for the year, he's, he's shooting almost 45% from the uh, three-point area, 21 for 47. And, uh, you know, his role is to be the floor general and distribute the ball and play excellent defense on the ball and create those turnovers. He'll get two tries, and I've been impressed with his work so far. Not a whole lot of time last year for the Gothics, but he's come on and done a great job. He's way off with that first one of two, and he'll get another one. Well, this gets back to the problems the uh, Gothics are having on the line. In and out with the second. The tap won't go, and over the back goes King. Great rebound attempt by number 33, Nelson, but he misses his and causes Neil King to get a foul. Dwayne Kennedy replaces Waddleton, so Kennedy comes off the bench, gets a quick blow, and he's back into the game. They tried a long one again, it doesn't work. Bound with good hustle, and it's getting physical out there, John. Eddie Baum, obviously, with the body on that young man, will take a back seat nowhere well, along in there. Glassboro's offensive set, uh, they're really, they're making one screen and releasing long, which worked early, but they're really putting a lot of demand on their guard to get free without a second screen. Against this kind of pressure, it's very difficult at times. Omar Foot down the lane, got the lay in. Now that's what you have to do against a team that exerts that type of pressure. You can't settle for the jump shot. You can't put it on the floor. When you do, you got to take it to the hole. Baum goes baseline and gets his first deuce. He's off the hook now, so watch Eddie Baum. Myers gets away with a push off. I think the problem Eddie Baum has is range. I think he believes his range is a little bit further than what he thinks. When he makes that move and he's in the 12-foot area, he's an excellent scorer. Semiralia's turnaround won't go. It's knocked around and Baum comes down with it. Kennedy with the sideline break. Cross court. Frink in the corner. Back to Baum at three. He goes foul line. Nothing. Out of control and it won't go. Watkins lost control of that, John. Yeah, a lot of states offense, you'll watch, they have an open middle where they give their, their cutters or their center people a lot of area to work in. Samaralia misses the jump shot. Reed was there for the rebound and he was fouled. Uh, you know, we didn't get a chance to really enjoy the, the abilities of Dwayne Reed the last time we saw him down in the, uh, against Rutgers Newark, but uh, he really does come on and do a great job for this team. Very solid, fundamentally sound, and doing a great job here in this Glassboro offense. No doubt about that, Bob. He, he's an excellent player in this conference. Again, another transfer that has come home, and we talk about it. This conference has had su tremendous success in getting guys to come home. Well, you, you know why that happens? I'm going to tell you. And we had success... Uh, when I coached also because coaches do a great job in recruiting and by meaning a great job in terms of keeping on student athletes when they make a decision coaches wish them well I mean truly wish them Instead well. Instead of bad mouth in a program. Exactly and then when things don't work out that player will give you a call back and that's why this conference sometimes has an important amount of transfer student athletes. Nelson won't go. Great box out by Wiedemann. Watkins is called for throwing him right out of bounds and uh, off to the side. A comment about Kennedy, John. Lightning quick, number 10, Dwayne Kennedy. Got to that ball back here at the backcourt before it fell away. Uh, just absolutely lightning speed. Yeah, he's only averaging three, three four points a game, but uh, between him and uh, Danny Wallaton, boy, they really have that point guard really secured up both on the offense and defensive end. Frank with a steal. He goes down, looks for 
Baum, good block by Wiedemann, and Jersey City looking to set the offense up. A three from Canada will go. A little bit out of his range. <coughs> good rebound by Wiedemann to get Glassboro in, in business. Inside the foot, he's fouled. Good look. John, last time we had the Glassboro State props, Omar put our player of the game off the bench as uh, just a freshman. Tremendous, really, ability. Uh, hasn't even had to come to the, the, the forefront for this team yet. And he's probably one of the real superstars, I think, in, this, in hiding. And, and he, as you say, in hiding, he really hasn't reached his potential at this point. That time break and uh, had the number advantage uh, and had someone in the block area. Excellent move, kicking it in. And uh, now State is over, which will put Glassboro at the line. Okay, first one for foot is good. He has three. That was the second foul on number 32 for Jersey City. So he had to check, he checked out and we brought in McKevitt back into the lineup. Excuse me, 33, Nelson. So McKevitt in to replace him as the ball won't go on the second one for foot and Jersey City starts to break. So McDevitt in the corner, cross court. Good save by Baum. Glassboro back to the zone, forcing the perimeter shot. A 3-2 look and good hands by Reed. Baum pulls in the key. McKevitt throws one up, nothing doing. Wiedemann works it to himself. Baum saves it, not quite, just on the line. That deflection off the front of that zone just shows you the advantage. Glassboro has some big people on the front of that zone. It's not like they have their 5'10 point guard. You're talking 6'4", 6'3", 6'5". There's a five-second call on Glassboro. And John, what's so very simple as we see all the coaches screaming at each other that time? is to just run your out-of-bounds play, John. Just your under-the-basket out-of-bounds play, you can get it free. Well, you know, that's one advantage of, of having a pressure team because Charlie Brown will pressure for 40 minutes as we see an excellent dump down. Good feed by Canada. The assist goes to and Watkins to Deuce. And Coach Giannini is, is, is calling for the clear out so that State cannot trap the ball in the backcourt area. Baum using being physical. Frank with another steal. Watch him. Look out. Oh, he just gets it. He lost control yes. on the way up. Yes, he did. Tempo is back to Jersey City's favor. Frank has two. Glasgow needs to be patient. Seven, eight, nine passes. Myers, nice hustle by Frank again. You know, John, Frank came off the bench, as you can hear the crowd, just absolutely enthusiastic with what's going on here. Well, Jer Jerome had been starting. So he is a quality player. He is not a bench player. Bob Barrett checks into the lineup for Glassboro. Barrett nursing a few injuries there, a little knocked up right now. You know, Nixon pings. But uh, yeah, he had uh, all, all preseason, he had bad tendonitis in his knees. And, uh, you know, talking to Coach uh, uh, through that Christmas break, uh, they really rested him in practice situations, just trying to prepare him for games. <coughs> Rooney checks back in for Jersey City as Canada makes the first of one and one, so he has one. Last five minutes here, Bob, again, we're, we're looking at a, a three-point spread. Very important for Glassboro Prop. If they've got to do one thing, they have got to get their tempo back to their liking. Canada has both ends of that one and one. It's 28-24, Glassboro on top. Bob Levline with coach John Adams here on OBC TV, bringing you all the action of NJAC basketball. And we'll follow this league right down to the playoffs and the finals, men and women. Canada called for the reach and the hold, so it'll be a one-on-one -on -one situation with that. And uh, John, just if you're out here watching this uh, without any prejudice towards either team, you see that Jersey City really has Glassboro confused. Well, I'm not sure it's confused. I think it's back to the whole thing of, of great, great team and man-to-man -man pressure, especially on the ball. Now, right there, you saw Canada get a little bit frustrated. But don't forget, uh, Paul Weidman is uh, six foot four, And if Canada doesn't put the pressure on it when the ball's on the floor, Paul will just see over the top of him and make the entry pass. OK, here we go. Canada with the ball against a man-to-man -man defense now. Change into Rooney. They run their high post offense off this. 
That's Screen a, down. That's Watkins. Is a and they got Sean player. Rooney on a block. Rooney, one hand, he held it off, and he's called for yeah, the foul. Yeah, he did. That's an excellent call. Now, in see uh, at Duquesne University, that's not a foul. <laughs> not at the higher level, huh, John? I just mean, Division one, that's a great seal. And, and Coach Brown is really concerned about it. You know, he had a great seal, but the player, after sealing, you don't ever force or push the opponent. It'll be one and one for Frank Semeralia. Steve Turner all over, uh, Charlie Brown all over Steve Turner and Jeff Plunker right now. We get a good look at Semeralia. Four point lead for the Gothics here. It's a one and one situation. And uh, he's usually money right from that spot, John. Frank Semeralia has five. A quiet first half for he, that young man. Yes, he has. And, and he really is going to have to pick it up in the second half. He's averaging uh, almost 19 points a ball game, and he's not uh, anywhere near halfway that far. He has six now. He's cutting the lead to two. Jersey City right back at it in action. Back to the zone. Coach Giannini mixing it up. Well, I, I think it's trip. excellent because uh, in, in any kind of, especially against an up-tempo team that wants to just kick it, get to the offensive end, get into the transition game, if you change the defense, you're making them recognize, as we see, Beck another right, three-pointer. Back right into the game and tosses a three. He has six. He ups the lead to five, and that was a great jump shot with somebody in his face. Myers the ball. But you got to give Glassboro credit. Wiedemann tries three short off the front. Not his forte there. Not out of it, though, John. They haven't played the best half a team could play, and yet they're still right in the hunt for this game. Yeah, but I'm, I'm still concerned with this lead. I'm not really concerned. I might take a timeout here. I may not wait for the next 326 to kick down. The lead is eight. Dwayne Kennedy has a three. That's five for him. And... Westboro once again get, trying to get their offense in gear. Semeralia has his man sealed. He won't get it. Almost stolen again by Jersey City. Jersey City will double the ball at any opportunity. That's a force. Oh, almost a great pull rebound by Reed, and he's going to send Beck to the line for a one and one. And uh, not used to that. They have a look on their face, John. They're coming down almost like a lost little weathered look. Wondering what they're doing is right, wrong, or indifferent. Well, State just came back at him so quickly. Uh, it's, it's like a, uh, a fighter getting hit with, a, you know, with an uppercut. And he's shaking the cobwebs. And that's why I would be a little concerned at this point because there's still three minutes left. And State has made a, a, a very, very quiet but effective run. Now, Sean Rooney's in a basketball game. If I'm on the other side, I'm looking to see who is playing him. And I think, he's, I think he is playing Frank Semerillo. Waddleton, I mean, excuse me, McKevin called for a foul here, and I think the officials have decided we're going to put this one back where we want it. Yeah. Back right. to my point. I would see who Sean Rooney is playing, and I would, if I had something within my offense in terms of isolation, I would work on him defensively. Jerome Frink back into the game for McKevitt. So McKevitt has a quick entry and exit this time through. One and one for Paul Wiedemann this time. And uh, Beck was continuing to live a legacy here of bad foul shooting for Jersey City. Jersey City doing an excellent job of limiting the props to only one offensive try. Wiedemann misses the first of two, and Jersey City is over the second limit. They have 10 personals. So it'll be a two-shot opportunity every time for Glassboro down the road here. Wiedemann has three. It's a seven-point Jersey City lead. And Jersey City back in a man this time down. So a little switch up, trying to find something that'll work right. Double low stack now by the props. I mean, excuse me, by the Gothics. Bam, ball knocked away. Rooney loses it. Opportunistic defense by Glassboro that time down there. Well, again, it's another change. And Jersey City just staying with their norm. Tough, face in your face, man to man. Rooney lost his man. Was Wiedemann, John, and just what you talked about. <coughs> Riggs cross court. Barrett to Semeralia for a deep three. He's got it. 
Well, that time he was squared up and had his feet planted, and they found him early. What a stroke he has, John. Baum in the hole is fouled from behind. Good call by the official. Now, here's a call by Coach Giannini. He's gone back to the man. Not second guessing, but we know Charlie Brown's philosophy. Every single day, you'll, you will never, ever see. Okay, more subs for Jersey City. Again, number 23 back in the contest, Darren Watkins. McKevitt will be in for the shooter, Ed Baum, and Sean Rooney checks out. Back to my thought. Jersey City every day practices the man-to-man -man pressure. Therefore, offensively, what are they running? They're running their man-to-man -man more than they do their zone. They will never play zone unless they're in superior foul trouble. Therefore, four players left, maybe. Therefore, on the other end of the spectrum, I might be going a little bit more zone on this back end, especially to try to climb back in, in the last 216. Jerome Frank has been with every loose ball. He picks up that missed foul shot by Ed Baum. Good sail by Watkins. He forces his way in. Baum for the putback. He's got it again. He puts it in that time. Ed Baum, great hustle on the offensive board. Well, there's where his offensive size has come into play. And tempers get a little bit tough, and all because of that held ball. No need for that. Both, both players fought for the ball. Very clean. I'm sure they'll shake it off. That's all sort of playing for uh, superiority, John, in this situation. And a rousing applause for Ed Baum and for the Jersey City State Gothics so as he checks out of the game. Jersey City will retain possession on that one, too. So a big turnover. Glassboro had cut it to four. The momentum is still with State. Even though a good run by Glassboro had gotten it to four points. McKevitt fighting for position now. And the ball back in the hands of the point guard. And McKevitt had a good job. Uh, he was being fronted, and there was no weak side help. Into Frank. He looks for McKevitt. McKevitt does get it finally. And Semiralia picks it up while he's out of bounds. Nah, that, there it was. John, these guys, the size that's of this game, when they match up size to size, shrinks this court an awful lot. And there's not a whole heck of a lot of room for anybody to do anything. And you're talking 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, Quick! And, and big. There's no skinny ones up there. There are some huge young men out on the court. You take a look at Dwayne Kennedy in between the Jersey City guys. He's 5'9", and he's lost in that maze. Back to the man. Beck trying to get clear, good defense, and a good stop by the coach, John Adams, on that one to get control of the ball. Reggie Riggs had good defensive position. He's called for a foul, push off, and it'll be a two-shot opportunity for Stefan Beck. See, at that time, it was just uh, <laughs> You were just looking no, for a loose ball. I was just holding that ball because usually when a coach catches a ball during a game, he holds it, makes the referee come to him for it, and then you can get in your talk. Exactly. You know, but you watch the hand check, watch the push off, so on and so forth. But no one came to me. They know better, John. You've got two years out of this business. You've got a lot of yelling in your, in your system here. Beck will get two opportunities now. A seven-point Jersey City lead. And Beck having trouble. John, I don't understand. You can, he can stick 40, 50% from three points and from that 15-foot 15 15 charity stripe. Problems. All mental, Bob. He makes the second of two, does Beck. He has seven for the Gothics to lead back to eight. Glassboro has got to reduce the rest of this game to two possessions. Hopefully, they will score on two, hold the Gothics without a score, and excellent defensive play on the baseline. Jerome Frank been all over the place, John. Good block on that one. Adrian Cooley replaces we Michael Burden. We can't even get our thoughts out. The play is so quick. And intense. It's been a quick first half. Not even a timeout, John. And that's surprising. Samaralia airs it out. That was an NBA three-point try. And Samaralia, of course, with that shooter's mentality, that doesn't even bother him a little bit. Just the fact that he's got another a miss in the percentage column. Eddie Baum back in the game along with Sean Rooney. So Coach Brown goes to the big guys. He's pushing him through. I'll tell you what, when you can push four and five, six foot six inch, six foot seven inch players, bound baseline move is in. That little bit of rest. It's composure, John. I think they're picking their composure back up. Jersey City, and uh, that I think that has to be regained a little bit by the Gothic. I mean, by the props. 
Semirali, a nice move, and he's fouled by Baum. It was an excellent move, but if I'm close to Giannini, my concern is this. Right now, Glassboro is making one or two passes, and the man with the ball is trying to create his own offensive opportunities. And that's, I think, what you what we had seen, I think that's why you see a little bit of a look of despair or whatever on the faces of some of these players, just for the basic fact that they know what they're supposed to do. And you alluded to that, what they're doing now, and that's obviously what they're doing. They're having a lot of trouble trying to create themselves, and uh, that's not Glassboro State. And they did it in such a nice manner to open this basketball game. I'm sure that was the last words out of John's mouth before they came out. But you get into pressure situations, and all of a sudden, the best laid plans, John. Okay, we have 40 seconds to go in this first half, 4-0, as Kennedy goes over for some personalized instructions from Charlie Brown. And you can bet this is a one-shot opportunity. Back to the zone. And when you got a team like Charlie Brown's here, you don't do what he tells you. You might find yourself down the end of the bench handing out cups. Now, I think this is, uh, this is where Glassboro should be and maybe where they should have been for the past three minutes. Back in that zone. A 1-2-2 two, two look right now from Glassboro, and Jersey City will hold for the last one. Ten seconds to go now in this half. Canada look to penetrate and make something happen. Corner jump, Rooney for three. Got a three! Sean Rooney, a three at the buzzer. Rooney has eight, and he puts a mark on that one for Jersey City. A 43-31 halftime lead for the Gothics, John. And big, as we watch shot. Westboro State going off, shaking their head, it's almost in disbelief. Well, I don't know if it's disbelief, but I think they're a little concerned, and I think they're a little annoyed with themselves for getting away from the game plan that they so well executed in the beginning of this basketball game. And 12 games throughout the season, too. No, no doubt about it. Okay, we're at halftime here. The score, 43-31. The Gothics on top, and John, you'll be back with a halftime interview with athletic director of Jersey City State, Larry Shiner. So we'll be back with that interview right after this. Okay, welcome back here to Fry's Gymnasium on the campus of Jersey City State. And John, a nice little conversation with uh, Larry Shiner, but a uh, a few little hidden thoughts in there. Uh, you guys <laughs> did more than legislate while you were out there <laughs> at the convention, huh? We're leaving that untouched. I don't hear any words out of your mouth, Coach. No comment. <laughs> uh, Larry has to pull us out of that one. Unofficially in the first half, but with my stats here at the bench, Semiralia led his team, Glassboro, with 10 points, while Jersey City State had Watkins with 9, Baum with 7, Beck with 7, and Rooney with 8. So very balanced scoring on that side of the coin. And... Uh, John, real quick, a good, good first half for Jersey City State. Well, ex excellent uh, defensive first half, which I think is, is the difference in this ball game. And we get back to a key word we use in the open, tempo. I talked about that State wanted the games in the high 70s and 80s, and uh, they're right there. And I'm, I talked about uh, Glassboro won it in the 50s and 60s, and unfortunately, they're there. But uh, Glassboro's got to, to master the defensive pressure. Wayne Reed's three won't go. King the rebound, and they kick it right out to Waddleton. Watkins, good body control, and he's got it. Watkins has 11. The lead up to 14 now. John, and we get a minute to touch on it. We had no time in the first half, not a stoppage of action. No timeouts, anything. A great job done. And ball comes loose and right into Jersey City's hand, so everything going right for the Gothics early. Baum knifes in and gets the roll. Now that's Eddie Baum's forte. He is not a long perimeter shooter, but he can put the ball on the floor, penetrate, and use his muscular body to get the shot he wants. And make no doubt about that, it's all muscle on that young man. Riggs backs in, turns and gets it. Reggie Riggs has eight. Nelson will get the goal. Neil King. Put back in, go. Giannini may be calling for time a lot sooner than he anticipated. Well, right now, you can't, you can't look at the clock. You have to manage the score and take your timeouts accordingly. And, of course, the flow of the game. And right now, Glassboro into a, a spread motion offense, which is exactly what they need. 
and it looks like a pattern is developing here. They got some screen downs happening, and then it looks like the first three players have taken the ball to the hole. A foul called on White, and Giannini called timeout. He's already using it, but he is very, very, very disappointed, John, from what I can see with his team in the early going. And uh, John, as you said before, and I think this is a strong point, they seem to just be trying to carry the load themselves. Each individual player. Well, their offensive system is so sound, and uh, you know they have to believe in it. I mean, uh, you know, a team that's 10 and 2 obviously has executed throughout the first part of this season. And uh, right now we're looking at the coaching staff. And while we get that, John, the assistants to Giannini are Joe Cassidy, Bob Pedrick, and Chris Martin. And finish that thought because I think it's Yeah, and I, I just think all they're talking about is executing, taking time off the clock, spreading the floor, making state play man-to-man -man defense all over and most of all take away their weak side help and double team effects. I'll tell you with the size of state John on the floor though you have to tend to believe that they can really dominate or dictate whatever they so choose. They when they get into a trap situation you can barely see anybody and uh, well that's true but if, if you look at, at Glassboro right now they're matched up even in terms of size. Riggs gets a step but the baseline taken away from him. Riggs and Seminario Semeralia can't get the roll again. He's just turning and shooting, John. Yeah, those two have got to pick it up this half. Neil King on the wing goes baseline. He's blocked by Reed. He got through the first two, John, but the good help side there. Waddleton gets it off the shoulder. And didn't go. They just must have not have seen it. It looked like it went off the shoulder of Riggs. Almost a good play by Dan Waddleton. This is a time, Bob, that, that a team like Glassboro, who can push the ball, sometimes we'll try to push it too much. There was a good, that was a good system right there. They got the ball inside to Burden. He just missed an inside one. And uh, at the rate Jersey City plays, John, I do believe that Glassboro could get back into it. Neil King. Now Glassboro that time doubled down on the ball on the baseline. Obviously you're taking a chance leaving one person open and a, a great look found the open man. Neil King punctuates your statement, John, with one heck of a dunk. And uh, that time, McKevitt did the cardinal sin again, John. He went through with his block. I don't think they were going to call it until he wound up hitting the man on the head with his hand. Again, I think we're going to see the props taking the ball to the hole more this half. And don't be confused with it, but I, I would lay dollars of donuts that you'll see the props make one serious run, if not two, at this lead. An 18-point lead for the Gothics, 51-33. 1734 to go in this second half. Michael Burden misses the first. You know, also in that timeout, I'm sure the coaching staff talked about, you know, although they're down 18 points, which is a little unbelievable this quick, that also talked about their their defense and that their defense is not creating a lot of easy baskets and putting that much more pressure on their half court offense. Okay, as we see it dry up, but John, I just looked at this real quick. Glassboro, they have Glassboro shooting 64% from the field in the first half. Jersey City State a little less, a lot less than that from what the looks of this are. 12 for 37. And uh, there's got to be something wrong there because that's a, that's awful numbers. I think he might have went the other way around. Burden makes the second half of that two shots opportunity. He has five. And Watkins from three about mm -hmm. third six or seven feet too long. Now you see Dwayne Reed, John, starting to handle the ball an awful lot more in this offense. Semeralia goes one-on-one. -on -one. Back out to Wiedemann. Corner to Riggs. They need him. He's got three. Excellent Reggie Riggs. setup. Reggie Riggs 11, and that's the offensive system. Watkins drives the lane. It won't go. He gets his own miss, and he's fouled from behind. Yeah, Frank did not block him out on the first shot. And let's get back to the matchup uh, between uh, McKevitt and Semerillo. Mark McKevitt will have a difficult time.